What's up everybody? Uh, today I'm going to show you the top of the uh, roof of our uh, 31 foot Hillcrest RK uh, Alpen Light. This is the one that Kim and I got to uh, travel this winter with. thought it'd be easier to get in some tight places, some smaller campgrounds, smaller state parks, and area just like this. Now we can get bigger things in here on this uh, park, but uh, this is at Cobb Campground outside of Lake City, Florida. But what I wanted to show you today was the top of our roof and what I've done. Now initially what I have done is I have coated uh, this roof with that roof coating that you can get from Home Depot. I'll put it down below the uh, the brand and everything. It's the same thing that Camper Van Kevin used on his, so I took his recommendation. Thanks, Kevin, for putting that out there. But this stuff's sealed up real good. Now, I did all this with a roller, and I've got to come back and cut it in in some places, but I didn't have time before we had to la the leave, and i got to do the slide jet. I do have my gallon in there to do it just haven't had the time right now or to be honest with you haven't made time but uh, it sealed it up really good it went on real easy so there's no problems there now um, the skylights here there, I've got some recalking that I'm going to do I'm going to replace this eventually because you can see it's cracked so eventually it's going to bust I got my satellite dish up here this is my king dome with the dish and this has got the uh, permanent mount there on the bottom, but I can unlock it and take this off and put it anywhere else I want to if I can't get satellite where I'm at. Here and here, we got way too many pine trees and I'm not picking up a signal. But we got good internet so we can watch Netflix or Hulu or, or uh, regular TV off the uh, computer. So we got the over-the-air TV antenna. I may or may not change that out. Um, but as you can see right here, here is where a, a uh, limb hit our trailer, and I've got to get this fixed too. I'm going to fix this today. But this is where that limb hit when we were in, uh, I believe, uh, Cades Cove, um, down there in the Smokies. And in fact, I didn't really, I walked up here and looked at it and I didn't see that there was an issue, but now it's pretty elevant. So I'm going to go fix that right now. But here's my solar. I got five 100 watt solar panels all hooked up together, coming back. They're all tied together in a five to one underneath here. And I got two lines coming down and going down the bathroom vent. There's a wall here that goes straight down into the lower bay. So it made it real easy to connect my solar. You got the fresh air fan there, fresh air fan in the back uh, with the covers on it. So those two fantastic fans help cool the rig. But we'll come back up in here and we'll do some resealing on here. We'll take these off and paint it up around them, the rest of our uh, roof coating, and get everything sealed up real good. But I I never noticed that before. I'm glad I came up here and filmed this. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so I'm going to get on that right away. It's been a, had a little leak right here, so I don't know if it ran down there and ran across or what, but I'm going to check this out. That's what I got up on the roof. I'll go downstairs and I'll show you the rest of the solar of what we did downstairs to receive all the energy uh, that's produced from these solar panels. Okay, we are back down here. I'm going to show you in the belly. Uh, what I have that the solar panels from up above they come down and, and connect to now if you want to see this solar setup I recommend that you do a search on YouTube Will Prowse he is one of the 
top guys that I think knows his solar, knows his batteries. <laughs> you got to go watch his channel. He's on the van build uh, out there in uh, Parker. He's out there. Uh, Jamie interviewed him. But uh, DIY solar and more likely his video come up. But whatever he did on one of his videos, I copied and I did it right in this uh, unit here. Now these unit, this system won't power the uh, uh, the air conditioners. I didn't want them to, but this is good enough for what we need to do to watch TV and run all our low power uh, usage uh, items such as the microwave, coffee pot, uh, stuff like that, where I don't have to get the generator out. If I need to run the air, I'll bust out the generator. But anyway, <clears throat> to show you what items that I have here. I got the PowerTech on inverter. It's a 2000 watt inverter. It's a PS1003. <coughs> Excuse me. I got the EPver Tracer BN series charge controller. And I also have the MT50 uh, inverter uh, remote control that I can actually, uh, well, actually, this goes to the invert, uh, the charge controller. I can change the dynamics in here for charging and you're going to have to uh, make some changes on this especially if you use lithium batteries if you use just regular gel batteries or lead acid batteries there's also settings in there for that and then i also bought a new intelli powered pd 9100 uh, series converter uh, because the converter that i had in here was for of course lead acid batteries and it only went up to 13.8 on the volts well, we know we need to get between 14.4 and 14.6 volts for lithium batteries, especially the battle bore, and that's what they recommend. So I changed this out uh, for my uh, charger and put it in here. So let's take a look underneath here. I have a lot of room here. Over here is my inverter. It's a 2000 watt, and this is the same one that Will has. There's your charge controller, and there's my ch new charger that charges up the batteries. Now, there's a remote control right there on the top, that gray one. That goes up, up above for the MT50 that I can change the charging uh, statuses on there, and I can also read what's happening with the battery. This inverter here has a remote off and on. It's the black wire on the top right above the outlet right there. Uh, I can turn that off and on from inside. So I've got a couple cords coming over here to feeding different things. Uh, right now what I am doing, I'm using my shore power cord and plugging it in to one of these extension cords to run the whole unit. Instead of running power out of here and running to different things, what I found out, as long as I don't put a big load on, that I can hook up my regular cord on the other side over here right into the inverter and run the whole coach off that. So that's been a good thing. Now you got to be careful of course because uh, it's only a 2000 watt inverter and the wiring in this older RV which looks like a lot of 10 gauge wire in here. I use 6 gauge to hook everything up here because I wasn't pulling a big load. So you got to have to be kind of careful of what you how you uh, hook up your shore power to this one it'll trip once if it pulls too much so that's not a big deal but you don't want to have any issues with overheating of any wires but that's what I'm using I've got two Battleborn uh, 100 amp hour 12 volt batteries here and I got two on the other side of that wall there for a total of four batteries for 400 uh, amp hours of batteries and these batteries are just fantastic it's just a game changer of what I'm doing on this I can take them all the way down to zero if I want or I can just you know charge them back up with the solar up there it keeps them in good shape now if you got two or three days cloudiness well you're gonna have issues there they're gonna get drawn down your solar won't keep up that's what we got the generator for but that's what I'm using for the solar and for basically the guts for it and it's been working out just fantastic